Okay, we're back in Isaiah. We'll be in Isaiah for a while. It's a long book. Uh, we're in chapter 8 today. Chapter 8, I've uh, entitled that A Flood of Judgment. What's being pictured here, the big picture, is that uh, Assyria in the north is going to roll down the length of Israel beginning in the northern kingdom and going to wash up right against the walls of Jerusalem. And God is going to intervene uh, on behalf of Jerusalem. And that's what's being pictured here. Verses 1 through 10 of chapter 8 is the judgment of the, at the hand of Assyria. And 11 through 22 talks about salvation being in Yahweh. It's really, um, we're taking it a chapter at a time. But as I told you, the chapter and verse uh, divisions were added much later. So this is really continuing that same story from chapter 7. So in verse 1 here, we see again a um, uh, some crazy words and some names of kids that uh, kind of set us uh, on our heels a little bit, trying to understand what's going on. The Lord said to Isaiah, take a large tablet. So he's, what he's doing, he's making a sign here. And he's writing uh, in common characters, which means that which everybody could read. He's writing on that sign, Maher Shalal Hashbaz. Well, what is going on here? So what that name means, um, Maher Shalal, quick to plunder, is what that means. Hashbaz, quick to the spoil. You probably have a note if you have a study Bible that explains what that name is, but what that is, it's an invitation for the Assyrian attackers to be quick about their work. It's inviting them to be quick to come into Israel and plunder it and to take spoil, a quick attack and a quick looting of the northern kingdom. When is that going to happen is in verse 4. So we see the timing is when a yet-to-be-born son of Isaiah is about a year old. So... From Isaiah's perspective, when he's writing this, it's about two years off, you know, a year, uh, nine months for gestation there. And then I think about a year till uh, he's able to say mommy or daddy. I think that usually happens about a year or so. It's probably about two years off. This could be um, um, before the attack of Assyria. And he goes and talks about this people in verse 6. So this people... Uh, shifts from the northern kingdom, which is going to be overrun, to the southern kingdom. So he says in verse 6, Because this people has refused the waters of Shiloh, that flow gently and rejoice over Rezin, the son of Ramallah. So remember back in the beginning of the last chapter, there was this conspiracy. Therefore, behold, the Lord is bringing up against them the waters of the river, mighty and many, the king of Assyria in all his glory. And it will rise over all its channels and go to over all its banks, and it will sweep on into Judah. It will overflow and pass on, reaching even to the neck, and its outspread wings will fill the breath of your land, O Emmanuel. So what's happening here is that the uh, two rivers are in mind. One is a small river in Judah, the Shiloh, which is a, a stream that feeds a pool within the walls of uh, Jerusalem to sustain them if they're under siege. The other great river is the Euphrates River. That Euphrates River is in Assyria. It's going to overflow its banks. That is, those soldiers are going to come pouring down onto northern Israel and then into Judah, even to the neck, it says in verses 8 through 10. That is, it's very nearly going to overwhelm and overrun Judah. Verse 10 then says, uh, Take counsel together, but it will not, but it will come to nothing. Speak a word, and it will not stand, for God is with us. So we see Emmanuel um, repeated at the end of verse 8 and again at the end of verse 10 that this is an assurance that uh, God will protect them, God will be with them. That's what he's saying here, that they are going to be spared. But it's God's that's going to be sparing them, no plan of their own. We're going to see this fulfilled, actually, within the context of the book of Isaiah when we get to chapters 36 through 38. So, 
verses 11 through 12 talk about salvation being in Yahweh. It says, For the Lord spoke thus to me with his strong hand upon me and warning me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall honor as holy. Let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. So what's going on here? So Isaiah is basically being compelled here not to indulge in the popular paranoia of all the people around him. Rather, he is supposed to stand firm in the Lord. That's what he's being told here. So alternatively, it could be that Isaiah is being accused of being in conspiracy with the king of Assyria. So they could be saying that, Isaiah, your advice is uh, so much out of sync with what we think we all think we should do, that you must be in conspiracy with the king of Assyria to overthrow Jerusalem and Judea. And again, if that's the case, Isaiah is being told not to allow those accusations to discourage him or dissuade him, uh, not to indulge but rather to stand firm in the Lord, that Isaiah is to stand firm here. In verses 14 through 16, you'll see that God's word is immovable. All Israel is going to trip over it. It's going to be a stumbling block for them, uh, but it will prove to be true for what's called Isaiah's disciples here. This is the remnant, the disciples that are being taught by Isaiah, that are learning from Isaiah, God's word, again, as it said in chapter 6, for those who are hardened against it, who have decided that they're going to pursue their own national policies, it's going to be a stumbling block for them. They're going to trip over it. They're going to fall. But those who are following Isaiah, Isaiah's disciples, the godly remnant, it will be for them uh, true. They'll be encouraged in their faith in Yahweh. So Isaiah in verses 17 through 19 resolves that he's going to depend on Yahweh. He's not going to waver. Uh, and he's told that he's not to listen to the demands and consults those who speak to the dead. Uh, Yahweh's telling him, don't listen to them. Uh, you're going, they're going to ask you to go and consult with uh, dead leaders from the past, perhaps. Uh, maybe they're reminding, uh, reminded of uh, Saul when he called up, um, um, I forgot his name, called up uh, the prophet from the uh, grave and consulted him or attempted to consult with him. And uh, Samuel, sorry, it took me a minute there. Uh, but uh, when he, maybe they're remembering that and they're urging him to go talk to Samuel and see what he should do. But I, Isaiah is not going to do that. Rather, in verses 20 to 22, it says, to the teaching and to the testimony. That is, go to the law, that's the teaching, the Torah, and the testimony here is the word of Isaiah, what Isaiah is prophesying. That is the standard of truth. If they will not speak according to this word, that is the teaching and the testimony, it is because they have no dawn. They have, there's no light in them. They have no uh, um, faith that they've become hardened as Isaiah warned, or the Lord warned Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. So literally, the law and Moses, the Moses, Mosaic law and the prophetic word are to be their standard for truth. So some personal applications here. Uh, we find often that we're surrounded by all kinds of threats. Uh, just today, as I get ready to... Um, Record these videos. I see yet another COVID uh, variant is loose in the world. Uh, this will be never ending. Uh, viruses mutate. That's what they do. Uh, we're surrounded by threats of war, war with China, war with Russia. We see the world in disruption every place around us. And it's easy for us to fall into uh, the conspiracy, the paranoia of the world around us. But the Lord invites us here in Isaiah. He invites us in the rest of his word to trust him, to depend on him, 
to not be wavering, not be doubting, to understand what his plan is for the future and to live according to that plan. That's our challenge, brothers and sisters, as we read these words, words written so long ago, but words that are relevant for us today, that we need to stand firm in God's word, even when people around us seem to be losing their mind. So God bless you, and may you find stability and peace in the word of God.